I'm at the a-hole for telling my childhood friend that he's heading for 400 pounds. My friend James and I, both 42 males, have known each other since third grade. He has always been a bigger guy. I've always been a bit leaner until recently. In our late 30s, I put on about 40 pounds to now be around 270. James put on weight as well and is in the 325 range. We're both taller guys, but still too heavy for either of us. Over the years, we've both tried dieting in different forms as both of our wives are supportive and would like to join us and lose weight as well. After watching a few where does your meat come from type documentaries, not preaching, I promise, my wife and I decided to switch to try to switch to a plant-based diet. We're not vegan, we still eat cheese sparingly and skim milk on occasion, but neither of us have eaten any meat whatsoever in eight weeks. I'm down 31 pounds, my wife is down almost 24. Dang, good for you guys. So I see my buddy about a month ago when I was down 10 to 15 pounds and he says I look great and what am I doing differently? I tell him we're trying plant-based diet and before I could get too deep into any explanation, he kind of cuts me short, laughs and says this is all BS and don't start bragging around his wife as he'll never give up meat. Okay, terrific. I wasn't planning to and you also asked me. I didn't even bring it up, but we leave it there. Last night we were at another friend's house for dinner and drinks and our host mentions my wife and I look terrific and my wife brings up what we're doing. Despite it being received positively by everyone else with well wishes, my buddy gets all pissed off and starts openly announcing eating meat is a vital necessity to every diet, starts calling me soy boy lol and looks at his wife and says don't even consider it, it's never happening. He tells everyone the only reason we're losing weight is because we're clearly starving ourselves and anyone could get the same results on any diet doing the same thing. To which my reply was, we've tried other diets without results, you know this. Maybe if you pulled your head out of your A for a minute, you'd see I'm not trying to recruit you for anything and your facts are wrong. There are entire regions of the world that don't eat any meat slash dairy and are all much healthier than Americans as a whole. But by all means, keep on the heavy carb slash red meat diet and let us all know when you hit 400 pounds. That's pretty savage. That would be a tough one to come back from for me. This was a frustrating event because I don't initiate this conversation with anyone for a fear of exactly this happening. Eating meat or not eating meat triggers something in people. Regardless, my friend went to the bathroom and a couple minutes later excused himself and he and his wife left. Oh, I feel so bad for his friend. That was too much. The dinner was fine after. The other couples all felt like he attacked us unprovoked, but he's a longtime friend. I'm 100% confident that our friendship will survive this, but I still need to know if I apologize for my half of the incident, regardless of what was said in his half. Was I the a-hole for how I handled it? Ye I, yeah, I think so. But what do you guys think? Today, I effed up by going on a date with a therapist. This was actually last December, but, I always told, but I'm always told this is a hilarious story, so I thought I'd share. Okay. Last September, my ex-wife and I filed for divorce. I was going to say something, never mind. <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. Let's be the hilarity judge. Or not. We were separated. One of my best friends says I should try dating. She never led me astray, so I say, okay, sure, why not? First girl I match with on Hinge seems nice. We talk for a few days since I'm on a business trip and plan to go out when I get back. She's a therapist, works with neurodivergent kids. We chat a bit, all's good. We go on our first date after work on a Tuesday. I pick her up at her place, go to my favorite pizza joint in her area. Starts a bit awkward as first dates do and then she tells me, I, the girl, can't wait to tell you I'm pregnant. Okay, weird. Maybe the nerves. Understand we had no booze at this point. I think she was just nervous. So great. A few minutes later, she starts telling me about her parents who live near the Wisconsin, Minnesota border. And we're in Chicago land area. The parents show up and sit down with us. <laughs> yet they lived what? in the great white North. So I'm against the wall of the booth with her dad sitting next to me. She's across from me, her mom next to her. Okay. All right. Guess I'm paying for their meal, too. Okay. All right. Absolutely Guess not. <laughs> double date? Awesome. Mom and dad tell me they heard a lot about me, yada, yada. How much could they know? They talked about what it's like working for a vocational school, so I start freaking out. As I've only said I'm a school admin, nothing more, not where I work. I say, it's great, but I'm looking to go back to middle school or elementary school next year. Dad says he can't wait to have a son-in-law like me. Mom says she can't wait to have me marry into the family. Awkward. Wait, is this the first date? First date. 
They were drinking, so I give them a pass. Awkward evening continues. Yada yada, get to know you shit. We start leaving, and I picked up this chick, so I've got to drop her off. Grandma raised a gentleman, you know. Figured I'd do that and dip. Nope, we get back. Parents parked next to me. Okay, invite me up. Mom said she baked a great pumpkin pie earlier. Well, I love pumpkin pie, so I decided, okay, might as yeah, well. get the most of it. <laughs> yeah, might as well get something out of this night. Had some pie. Truthfully, some of the best pumpkin pie I've ever had. Love that for you. I try and leave, and they weren't really letting me go by giving me more pie and starting a new conversation topic. Best friend, the one who told me to start dating, calls and asks what's up. Took the call in the bathroom, and she comes up with a plan. I'm going to go pick up my friend Eddie because she thought I shouldn't use a girl's name with with his flat tire. Great. I got an out. She says she needs to walk her dog, annoying stuff, yappy dog, rubbing his butt on everything, dragging his butt across the floor, very poorly trained. Okay, fine. Come with me and walk me down. Mom comes too. I'm standing there trying to leave as the chick takes her dog for a shit. Mom says it's nice to meet you, yada yada, and says I'm so glad daughter found you. I didn't think she'd be able to settle down since we had her committed three times and walks away. What the heck? Bomb drop. I'm panicking now, sweating a little bit. I turned again to the car and the chick is right there, hugs me, tries to kiss me, yada yada, tells me I love you and can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Me. Great. I gotta go, you know. Friend needs help. I get in the car. This chick is in my rear view mirror. She's calling me. I pick up and she says, you didn't say you love me. Oh, best friend calls. Oops. Hang up on important call and picks up. Tell my buddy this. She's laughing her butt off. I'm scared shitless at this point, thinking headlights in my rearview mirror are her. So I start speeding up on the highway. (laughs) I'm speeding away and I get pulled over and the cop asks why. I tell him everything. It takes a good five to six minutes to get him to understand. He noticed I have Wisconsin plates and all he says is bro and gives me great advice. Never Put your dick in crazy. Thanks, bro, Chacho. Cop feels sorry for me and escorts me to the highway. Great, freedom. Chick texts me. I'm trying to ghost her. Now I left out an important detail. I went on a school night wearing school wear with my school logo. Once you know the name, it's hard not to find as I'm the only type of school like this in the country. I go to my boss the next day and tell her, says I'm an idiot for wearing my work shirt, really? laughs his butt off about the whole situation, asks if I blocked her. No, but that's a good idea. So I do it, tells me I'm an idiot again for not thinking this through. She figured out where I worked and starts oh. calling my desk, asking when we're going out, leaves a message, says she wants to be engaged by the time she's 30, which is weeks away, literally next month. At this point, I'm freaking out. I haven't. I have a school resource officer in my building. I tell him what happened, gave her name. He told me he'd take care of it if she came by, but also told me to move my car to the back, gated and can't see. Dude's a saint and it was a great idea. Chick shows up and is asking to see me. Security tells her that I don't work here. She gets snotty with the SRO, gets escorted out, calls my desk phone, pleading with me to give her a chance, finds my sister, my best friend, all on Facebook, tells them we're soulmates. I tell them to block her. Chick was crazy. Got her to calm the F out when I told her I would report her for harassment to her licensing board. All BS. No idea if that would do anything. And that, kids, is the story of how I met your mother. Kidding. Oh, the- <laughs> Kidding, but I was... <laughs> but oh damn, I was scared of dating for a bit. Wait, it, she's a therapist? Yep. TLDR. Went on a date with a therapist. Almost ended up married again. Am I the asshole for making my wife pay for something she gave away? My wife has a bad habit of giving away or lending out things that don't belong to her. I've lost count of how many times I go to look for something of mine only for her to say she lent it to someone. She also takes forever to get that item back. She once lent my stuff to a coworker and refused to ask for it back for a month. And I'll never forget the day my usually quiet, reserved son snapped at her for trying to give away his Nintendo Switch. If I wasn't also fed up with her behavior, I would have washed his mouth out with soap. I've had countless talks with her, but she continues to do this. My son and I have resorted to locking up anything we don't want touched, which is something we shouldn't have to do in our own home. Last week, I won a $300 tent in a raffle. I had no plans on using it, so I was selling it. When I found a buyer, I went to look for it, and I couldn't find it. When I asked my wife, she said she gave it to a friend of ours. I got mad at her and said she had no right to give it away. Her defense was, since I didn't spend money on it, and I 
wasn't planning on using it, it made sense to give it away for free. I told her that wasn't her decision to make, but she kept on repeating herself. I've had enough of this and said she's either going to pay me herself or get the money from who she gave it to. And if she didn't, I'd get law enforcement involved. Oh, is this his wife? Uh-huh. Oh, he's pissed. He means business. He's pissed. Since she would rather die than ask a friend for money, she paid me out of her own pocket. The issue eventually got around to her family. While they did say she should have talked to me first, they also reprimanded me for asking for payment. They reasoned that since I didn't actually buy the tent, I didn't lose any money, and it went to a friend who could actually put it to good use. I got several texts saying I should be ashamed for extorting my wife for money. I think I have every right to want to be paid for something of mine that was taken but everyone keeps emphasizing the fact that I didn't technically buy the tent and I didn't want it, so I have nothing to be upset about. Am I the asshole? I have so many thoughts. My actually <gasps> biggest qualm with this is getting your family involved in your couple's drama. Oh! The family doesn't know like all the things that led up to this point. Yeah. I do think it was wrong of him to be like, you have to pay me. Like, I think this is one of those, like, if you ever do this again, like, this is going to be a real problem. Yeah. Like, money didn't really have to get involved. But I also do Lawn think, like, enforcement too. Law enforcement too. That was <laughs> a little... That was a lot. Also, the whole, like, he did win it. Like, he, he didn't just, like, get it for free. Like, he earned it. He put his thing down. He tried to get it. It's more of the fact that she does this all the time. This reminds me of, like, when I accidentally threw away my husband's Invisalign. Oh. Because, <laughs> like, I was in a mode where I'm, like, I'm throwing stuff away with too much stuff. And I guess... I don't know how it happened. I threw it away and I felt so bad, but it wasn't like you have to pay for it now. Was it wrapped in toilet paper on the, your bathroom counter? I think counter? it was. It was one of those things. It happens all the time. Literally, this just happened to me and Justin. It was, and it's like an honest mistake and we laughed about it and we joked. He's like, you never clean and now you throw my my Invisalign. <laughs> but like, I, I would have paid him for it. Like I yeah. felt bad, but again, it's like clearly she is having a weird thing of like boundaries with like also why are you giving away so much stuff at least sell it at least make money for the family it's like the opposite of hoarding like she has like yeah. it actually seems like this might a be a little mental illness. a mental health problem yeah because why would you give away your kids go or your Poshmark. kids go well, on depop like the nintendo switch is crazy to just give away I understand. Crazy. It, it's crazy. Also, if you were just taking stuff and not asking and selling it, but at least I'm like, okay, she's making money. She's on the hustle. But that's still crazy. You have to ask people before you. Yeah. Ass what? It's weird. So I think his thing is he was just in a snapping moment. I would snap. And he was like, okay, pay me that money. And it was less like he needed the money. He was just pissed. Yeah. So then like the parents are logically like, that's crazy. You're extorting your daughter. And he's like, no, this was like us fighting and me yeah. being kind of an asshole in this fight. Am I wrong for not giving up the house that I inherited? I, 29 female, was raised in a Christian household. With that came gender roles that were ingrained in me at a young age. My granddad, however, hated that my parents taught us this way, and as I got older, I did too. Because of this, I became very close with my grandparents instead of my own parents. I also have an older brother that my parents labeled the second king of the house. I hate when fathers refer to their sons as kings. Oh my god, please, no! For more info, my grandparents lived in a beautiful house that had no neighbors, many trees, and a garden. They paid off the house after years and was very special to them. My granddad also had problems with his back and a condition that would get worse until he couldn't go on anymore. After my grandmother passed, he got worse and ended up needing at-home care. He didn't want a stranger in his home, so that wasn't an option. My parents preached that it was punishment for all of his sins, so they wouldn't take care of him and they were planning on putting him in a home. I decided to stay with him since it would just be easier. My job can be worked effectively at home and he'd get care from someone who isn't a total stranger. In the time I took care of him, we filled the home with the love and laughter my grandmother brought to it. As my granddad got worse, not a single call, not from my mom or dad or my brother. We were joking about it once and he said, maybe I should just give you Missy, the house's name, instead of your dad. You're just gonna give it to your brother anyways. He laughed after he said that, so I assumed he was joking. Fast forward, the worst happened. I was the one who found him, had to make the call, all of it. As much as I pushed away from my parents, I didn't want them to find out the news from a random person. The funeral was the first time I ever truly connected with my parents in years. We hugged and cried together and we were all vulnerable, but then it came time for the will. Now, it wasn't some telenovela with all the dramatics, but it was intense. The house that was supposed to be my dad's became mine, as well as many other things 
things that my dad planned on giving to my brother. I was accused of manipulating my granddad into giving it to me and my brother was just yelling. A week after my brother came to the house in tears. He was begging me to give him the house since his was too small for his wife and baby. He argued that because it's just me and my husband and we don't want kids, I don't need it. I told him to leave and felt horrible. I felt like an asshole and so does my family. He's right, I don't need the house. My job pays me good money and I could easily just live somewhere else. On the other hand though, my granddad wouldn't want him or my dad to have him. I am at a loss here. Am I the asshole? If you cared an ounce about your grandfather and you wanted his house, wouldn't you like smooch up to him and like, if he needed an in-home caretaker, I'd be like, yeah, I'll do it. If I knew I was gonna get his house after, I'd feel so guilty. Like, yeah, I'll take care of you, no problem. But they were gonna play the, his sins, ah, oh, his sins. Am I the asshole <laughs> for telling my best friend I don't want to be his friend anymore? I, 29 female, was friends with my best friend, 34 male, for 11 years. His dating history has always ended up being quite traumatic, and I've always tried to help him through that. He dated this one girl a few years ago, and she totally broke his heart. I don't want to go into detail because it's not my story, but it seemed that both of them were toxic towards each other. Every time something were to happen, it was a whole telenovela, and it never ended well. Well, they broke up, which hurt them both, and I ended up getting stuck in the middle because she wanted me to help her get him back and kept trying to use me to mediate, harassing me on every platform imaginable until I put my foot down and told her I wouldn't do it anymore. Anyway, my best friend started seeing someone and he started to act really secretive about who it was. He was always like, it's new, I don't want to say anything yet. And eventually I found out it was because he was dating that girl again. <laughs> I told him that I didn't want to be part of this drama and the toxicity and I didn't want to be his friend anymore if he pursued this. He told me that I was being unreasonable and he should be able to date who he wants without me walking away. I said he can date whoever he wants, but I don't want to be a part of who whatever toxic energy drama that's about to come through when the cupcake phase is over. Ooh. I told him I thought we would be better off not being friends anymore because the drama was affecting my mental health. He says... If I'm really his friend, I would stick around no matter what. But I feel like a boundary needed to be drawn because this crazy relationship started to affect my life too. Am I the asshole? Am I the a-hole for not wanting to give my toy to a kid and mom offering a replica as a solution? Background, I, 19 male, reside on the ground floor of an apartment with my mom. On the second floor, there's a family of three, including a restless and mischievous kid, nine male. Despite his mischief, I've had a good relationship with him whenever he comes to play until recently. He enjoys playing with my action figures, toy cars, and other toys from my childhood. While I'm usually open to sharing and even let him borrow my toys, I've noticed an increase in demands like, let me have this and this is mine. Over time, this bothered me because obviously I was taught not to claim something as my own when it belongs to someone else. A few days ago, I bought a small car solely for how intricately detailed it was. I used it as a decoration on my study table as it gave it an aesthetic touch. When the kid spotted it, he insisted on having it for himself. The situation escalated from the usual claims to refusing to leave my house unless I gave him the car. This child. I called his mom. She took him away without telling me anything or expressing any disappointment. But I don't understand why his parents can't teach him that what doesn't belong to him isn't his own. Now my mom offered to buy me an exact replica so that I could give him the old one, but I declined, feeling that it's his parents' responsibility to teach him the appropriate behavior. This is because I've witnessed him snatching toys from other kids in the nearby park, and the parents of those kids weren't cool about it, so I think it's a bit of a so I think it's a bit of a concern. So I think it's a bit of a concern. While I know this is a very petty issue, when I refused my mom's offer to buy me the replica, she felt a little upset. I wouldn't have even made this post, but my mom's feelings matter to me a lot. So, am I the a-hole? Am I the asshole for having our wedding in a cave, which means my sister can't come? Oh my god. My fiance and I, <laughs> I know. So many things immediately. <laughs> immediately. Okay. My fiance and I came here for more opinions. We are getting married this year and our venue is in a cave system. We are both active explorers and this is our dream venue. How it works is you will get married in the opening of the cave, then go down a set of stairs that bring you to a big open area in the cave. You then have the option to just stay in the area or do a cave tour. Oh. 
It is extremely cool and guests can't get into areas they are not supposed to due to gates that basically will sound an alarm if you get near them. Also, they only allow a total of 15 guests. So a small wedding. Very small. Overall, it is a very unique situation and we really want to do this. We understand that when inviting people, if they are not comfortable, they will not attend. It is a unique experience and I'm not pressuring anyone to go. Everyone we have invited seem to be cool about it. My mother is super excited. I invited my sister and she told me she can't do it, that her claustrophobia would make it impossible. I told her that is okay and if she wants to see it, we can record it or Zoom the wedding. I don't want her uncomfortable. This is where the argument started. She is pissed we would do a wedding that she can't attend. She called me a huge jerk that I won't change the wedding. I told her that this is our dream wedding and we are not changing it. I'm getting messages from people not invited that I am also a huge jerk. Am I the asshole? Whoa. You know, I was on one side at the start of the story, but by the end, I believe I've switched. Really? Okay. Yeah, not really that I was on the side of the sister, but I understood initially as she was talking about the caves, like I experienced claustrophobia as well. That would not be fun. But also it is their wedding and it's the sister's prerogative to not go. As the bride said, we're not pressuring anyone to go. No. And which I think is good. Like I, I here's the thing. I can understand where the sister is coming from that she can't do it but I then I can't understand going to the point of then being mad at your sister and being like why the aren't you changing your wedding for me it is a bit of a strange Next wedding it's a bit of a strange concept yeah. why are we doing a cave wedding are there going to be lights there and do we have to crawl to get there are you crawling in your wedding dress i'm so curious i'm like looking at pictures now mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of variations there's of a cave like wedding. apparently it's kind of a popular thing this one is like deep that's in actually, a cave i mean that's stunning here's the thing i as a guest may say no depending on how close this person is to me because that is a little terrifying. That's beautiful. But yeah. I'm not envisioning that the cave is open like that. Mm -hmm. I'm envisioning that it's like you're getting through a crawl space and going to a tiny opening with 15 people. So I might say no as a guest, but I wouldn't then go as far to be like, and you're an asshole for this. It's just and one like, I how can't dare go you? to. It's just one you can't go to. And she offered to film it. I don't know. Heart goes out to the sister, but also I understand where the bride is coming from while also not understanding why she would want to do that as a wedding. I, my wedding will not be in a cave. <laughs> Mine will not be in a cave. Mm -mm. My story is that I caught the suicide hotline and now it's a whole process. I said my dad left at two, but they think I said he molested me. I'm done by the way, and I'm really depressed. I'm really anxious and depressed. Am I the a-hole for refusing to take her 22 female banana bread? I-24 male was at my company cafeteria when I saw someone, 22 female, who also goes to my gym. I started talking to her, just a friendly conversation because I was bored. I didn't know she also worked at our company, but we decided to have small talk at lunch and go our separate ways. I actually wanted a buddy to talk to for lunch. I started seeing her every day and it was nice to have a friendly conversation and talk to people at our cafeteria. There's honestly no one who goes there and sitting alone while eating makes me depressed. The next day, I went back to my cubicle when I saw her standing there with banana bread. Now, she doesn't work in the same department as me, but on a different floor of our building. I'm not sure how she found my cubicle number, but I'm guessing she searched through every floor since there's only five floors. She told me she had made banana bread for me and wanted me to try it. I said I really didn't want to. I don't like banana bread. She insisted that it took her hours to make and she wanted to share it at lunch and to try a little. I said no thanks, then she got angry and said I was an a-hole and left my cubicle. Did I do something wrong for saying no to her banana bread? I'm so confused by this story. I feel like we need more context, but what do you guys think? Today I f***ed up by ruining my husband's relationship with his best friend. Ooh, oh, that's something you don't do. How did you do that? So my husband and I are both 35. We've been together for seven years and married for five. He has two older brothers that he isn't particularly close with. The one person he's very close with is his cousin, Aaron. They lived together after my husband graduated college. He was the best man at our wedding, and Aaron even lived with us for a year while we were married so he could finish school. I like Aaron a lot. He even felt like a brother-in-law to me, much more than my actual brother-in-laws ever felt. 
My husband and I have had a rough three years between COVID. There was a point where both of our fathers were in terrible health. We've dealt with infertility issues. And sadly, in July, we had a stillbirth at 34 weeks pregnant. And Aaron had been there for us through that. He's probably the person my husband can lean on the most for support. Last night, I got a call from Aaron's longtime girlfriend, Jennifer. She asked if it was okay if she could come over and have some girl talk with me. Jennifer and Aaron have been together about as long as my husband and I have. She has three kids from a previous relationship, and we love them. They spend the night at our house, and her older kids dog sit for us. She comes over and proceeds to tell me some serious issues she has had with Aaron, and she's at a loss at what to do. The main crux of her issues are Aaron is in an insane amount of debt, and he basically used her as a place to crash for seven years. Ooh. He's constantly criticizing her for parenting, saying she babies her teenage children. And finally, he's lying about where he's going, and his locations have him at a massage place that does happy endings. I hate to say that I knew about the financial issues and the parenting issues. Um, even my husband and I have called Aaron out about how he talks about the teenagers, but I had no idea how bad it was. We talked through it and I flat out asked her if he is going to a massage parlor and getting happy endings behind your back, would you still stay with him? And she said yes. So I gave her some advice about boundaries and talking to him and I left it at that. After she left, I went upstairs and told my husband what she said. He proceeds to have a complete breakdown. He's in tears. I finally get him to talk and he starts saying things like, can I just have one person in my life that I can trust? I can't go to my brothers to talk and now I now I can't trust Aaron because I know he's been doing this shit. He's fucking better than this. Then just just completely and utterly destroyed. I feel terrible. I didn't even know about it when I told him what Jennifer said. I didn't even think it could ruin their relationship. Aaron is the only person he goes to for advice. He really looks up to him as a big brother. And I just completely destroyed that image. I'm going with the classic pretend it didn't happen technique this morning, but I just feel like I completely took away the one family member who he felt comfortable turning to for emotional support. What do I do? And then there's an update. So update... Wowza, thank you everyone for your kind words and your jokes. It certainly helped calm, calm down my spiraling brain. I don't have much of an update on Jennifer and Aaron other than they have broken up, but my husband and I have Good. heard that a time or two and don't really buy it. I'll go ahead and give some clarification on some common questions. Why do you think you messed up? Honestly, because of my husband's reaction, the minute I realized he was breaking down and crying in my head, I was thinking, oh my God, I messed up. I just felt horrible that I made him upset. I know it wasn't me, it was what Aaron did that upset him, but maybe it's the former Catholic in me. I'm programmed to look inward for blame, lol. Is Aaron your husband's only friend? No, we actually have a great group of friends who are very much our chosen family to us. Aaron is his cousin and the only family member he's really close to. We have a really good relationship with his parents and siblings, but they've never been close. He's also the youngest of all the grandkids. His cousins are all at least five years older than him, so there was never anyone in his family he was close with growing up. He and Aaron got closer in college, and it felt like he finally had that person who understood their family that he could confide in. Why aren't you in therapy? Oh, don't worry. We are all in therapy. When our baby died, we got into group therapy, couples therapy, and individual therapy. Our couples therapist has been trying to get us to focus on things to look forward to again. Simple things like going out to dinner, going on a trip. We are unfortunately in a real life negative headspace these days, which I think is the other reason he had such a big reaction. Tiny update, my husband and I work from home. I tried my hardest to avoid the subject about Aaron and Jennifer. Then while I was in the shower, he came in the bathroom and said, by the way, yes, I am still pissed about Aaron. We went out to dinner last night. I did apologize to him. Not exactly, I'm sorry I told you, more like, I'm sorry that happened. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have absolutely nothing to apologize for. I'm pissed at Aaron. Paranoid me said, you sure you aren't mad at me at all? And my husband said, I'm 1% mad at you because you probably shouldn't have told me after I ate my gummies. We take Delta 8 gummies at night to sleep. I guess he had already taken a few by the time I came upstairs. I did tell him that there were more shitty things that Aaron has done that I didn't get a chance to tell him because he was so upset. And I asked him if he wanted to know that stuff, to which he said, not now, maybe another night. Yeah. We enjoyed our steaks and chilled for the evening. Another kiss. Probably. Oh. Am I the a-hole for feeding the kids at my son's sleepover donuts for breakfast? Genuinely so confused here, but maybe I messed up. My 34 female son, 10 male, had a sleepover this weekend at my house with four other boys. They were fine and well behaved and played video games and stuff. You know kids. In the morning, I thought I would give them a special treat since it was a sleepover and got half a dozen donuts for the boys and one for me. 
quick and easy breakfast for a fun morning. I typically make things like eggs, toast, fruits, smoothies, but again, I thought it was a special occasion. One of the boys told his mom, I guess, and I got a horrible Facebook message saying I'm a terrible mother for feeding my kids this, and I'm going to make him obese. I tried to explain, but she said her son wasn't going there again and blocked me. Dang, it sounds like this woman has some strong emotions. We'll put it that way. She's got strong opinions and emotions about this. <laughs> As far as I know, her son does not have any health issues in which eating a donut would be super detrimental to him. Is she being dramatic or am I in the wrong here? Please let me know because I'm so genuinely so confused and upset about this. Am I the a-hole?